that before you go have a seat is my black ass walking away after I get you cutting your bitch ass down. Oh, nigga, who's Chris? I'm a nigga that walk up, either beat you down or gun you down, which one I would prefer because I was good with both, you know, but especially I prefer to beat a bitch ass coward nigga down that would do a drive by, especially and kill and hit an innocent little kid. That's what makes it bad for the Crips and the Blood on this whole gang banging tip. That's why the white man is cracking down right now. Travis Robinson, AKA Big Space Ghost, hailing from Los Angeles. He's a member of the Rolling 90s Crips, who he was introduced to as a teenager by his older brother who went by the name of Wack. Now, when he first linked up with the Crips, a lot of the members of the 90s, they didn't really like Space Ghost too much. And you know, a lot of them didn't want him around, but one of the prominent members, a man by the name of Big Miz, he took a liking to Space Ghost and they became real tight. And he said that Space Ghost would always tell him that he wanted to have one of the meanest squabble games in all of Los Angeles, because that's the era that they came from, that late 70s, early 80s Los Angeles, where gunplay was around, but you know, the hands were still respected. And eventually, that dream that Space Ghost had of becoming one of the most vicious fighters in all of Los Angeles would come true. I mean, his squabbles were legendary. There's stories of him and another Rolling 90s member by the name of Babu clearing out modules in the LA County Jail back in the 80s, all in the name of the Rolling 90s. But just because he was from the old school and he liked to use his hands, and he could appreciate a good fight, don't mean he was shy about the gunplay. I mean, he definitely became one of the most respected and one of the most feared members of the Rolling 90s. Matter of fact, Big Miz was telling the story of how the insane 20s from Long Beach thought that they were beefing with the neighborhood Crips, the 90s. And he said that they never really had no beef with the insane. It was an incident that happened between Ghost and his family and the Insanes. And the Insanes was getting so much pressure put on them that it felt like it was the whole game, but it was really just Ghost and his family giving them the blues, you know, shooting up their spots, taking out their homeboys. So Ghost, you know, was definitely known for putting in that work. Well, you know, all the nigga, niggas know about Big Space Ghost, the West Side 90, better known as the knockout artist from neighborhood Crips, Rich. Road. The Korean lady that owned the t-shirt store in the slots to swap me, and she remember me, this black image, she'll say what she said then. Oh, you fight very well. You fight very well. Who is you? Oh, your arms are very big. Oh, neighborhood 90 trip. Big Space Ghost would also make a name for itself by being featured on some early 2000s Crip documentaries that would just document, you know, the Crip and lifestyle. The most famous one being Sea Walk, It's a Way of Living. If, if you got caught doing this, the Crip Walk and you wasn't from nowhere, you would've got beat down. That's the bottom line. You had to be from somewhere. OGs like me looking down at the young homies and wondering, what is the young homies doing? Let all these other guys come through and mess up the Crip Walk and start putting it down in a way where it's no longer the crib walk, it's just a walk. One thing about Big Space Ghost is that he was always gonna keep it cripping. And even as he got older in age and became more of an OG, it stayed that way. And he stayed ready for a squabble. But a lot of times, not just in the streets, he would take it to the mat. He loved MMA. He would enter into different competitions and tournaments. I mean, it's stories of people who just met him and within a few minutes, he's trying MMA moves on him. That's just how he was, man. Just, he built for battle, a warrior. But even though Ghost was known as an absolute savage in the streets with the heart of a lion, he did have one weakness. And that weakness was a woman, a woman by the name of Alicia Shibley. Now, her and Ghost had been together for over 20 years, since about 1992. And throughout that time, they ended up having two kids together. But it definitely was an unstable situation. 
Their relationship was volatile. Constant fights, domestic violence, I mean, just that ghetto hood type stuff, man. But throughout it all, they stayed in some type of contact, always finding a way back to each other. And they actually ended up getting engaged in late 2011 and moved in with each other of January of 2012, but it didn't last for too long because in August, they were already broken up. Alicia, she had found a new man, a man by the name of Randall Hill, and this really, really upset Ghost. Even though their relationship had been volatile and off and on, he still just couldn't let go of Alicia. He just really couldn't stand seeing her with another man. He began to try to contact Alicia frequently, calling her all throughout the day. Alicia had an adult daughter from a previous relationship who had recounted a time when she was riding with her mom and Space Ghost had called and her mom put him on speakerphone so her daughter could hear what he was saying. And she said he was saying stuff like he couldn't live without her, how if he couldn't have her, could nobody have her, and how much he loved her, and just a bunch of craziness. And she said she took it serious, but her mom just was laughing at him, laughing it off like it wasn't nothing. I guess they had been with each other for so long, she, she thought she knew him, you know, like it wasn't no big deal. But unfortunately, this would prove fatal because on September 26, 2012, Alicia finally agreed to meet up with Space Ghost. He promised her that he had $500 for their son's birthday, so she agreed to meet him. But before he would meet up with Alicia, he would get together with his good friend by the name of Damon Wilson. And while they were hanging out, Damon showed him social media posts that Alicia was putting up of her new man, Randall Hill. She was saying stuff like my best friend, my future husband, you know, just like lovey-dovey stuff. And this sent Ghost into a rage. And he actually printed out the social media post and made copies in preparation to confront Alicia about what he deemed to be infidelity because the way he seen it, you know, she was always his no matter what. And they agreed to meet in the alley near Slauson. Alicia arrived in her truck and Ghost would arrive by bus. And initially, you know, upon meeting, they had sex. But after the sex, Ghost confronted her with the photos, you know, and about her infidelity and a fight ensued. And according to Ghost, he just blacked out, man. And Alicia was stabbed 59 times in the face, chest, neck, arms. I mean, she had a tattoo of her new man, Randall, on her calf, and even that was cut. It's crazy, man. And for some reason, after this, Ghost would go over his good friend, Damon Wilson's house. Upon arriving there, he told Damon what happened, and he asked him to use his phone because his was dead. He stepped outside and called his son and just kept repeating like, Man, she, she went too far. She went too far this time. And for some reason, he took Damon Wilson's phone and took three photos of Alicia's dead body in her own trunk. I mean, that's crazy, man. He gave Damon back the phone and left the truck there and went about his business. The very next day, while Damon Wilson was riding a bus, he decided to show the pictures that Ghost had taken telling other passengers that, man, my homeboy just killed his baby mama. And one of the passengers happened to be a retired police officer. And from there, it was all downhill. Ghost was arrested not too long after this. He said that he planned to turn himself in to a police officer that he knew, but that police officer had retired. And he was scared because of his reputation to turn himself in to any other officers, but they got to him anyways. and. He ended up getting convicted of first degree murder. He tried to get voluntary manslaughter or second degree or make it like a crime of passion, but the jury, they wasn't trying to hear it. He was sentenced to 26 years to life. He's tried to appeal it since then, but it don't look like it's gonna happen. And he remains in prison to this day. It's just a crazy story, man. And rest in peace to Alicia Sibley.